It's a life-threatening disease that often goes undiagnosed due to non-specific clinical signs and symptoms. And without timely diagnosis and effective treatment, the median survival is less than two months. Today, one mom's fight for her child and how knowing the initial signs could save a life. Let's go behind the mystery of primary hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. It's a cow. Very good, it is a cow. At 34 weeks, I wasn't feeling well. I went to the doctor and they did a kick count and he did not pass. Um, and then they did an ultrasound and the doctor told me I would probably deliver this baby today. Once he was born, they discovered that he had a severely low platelet count. They gave him a blood transfusion, but he was burning through all the cells they were giving him. He had an enlarged spleen, lesions on his brain, blueberry muffin spots all over his body that they biopsied. Nobody really knew what was going on. They were asking us lots of questions. Um, they thought he might have a virus. They were asking us about the genetics in our family. No one, um, knew what was wrong until he was 10 days old. We met with pediatric hematologist oncologist, Dr. Philip Rares at the University of Virginia to learn more. Primary HLH is a rare and rapidly progressive and fatal disorder that's often very difficult to diagnose as well as treat. The T cells and NK cells in our body are present to fend off or attack infections once they get inside. Normally, a healthy person gets exposed to a virus. You have cytokines that say, turn on, there's something that I need to fight off, and then there are cytokines that tell those immune cells to calm down. In primary HLH, once that immune system gets triggered by an infection, the genetic defects lead to the impairment of the ability of T cells and NK cells to clear the infection. Those pro-inflammatory cytokines, or the cytokines that turn on the immune system, continue to get pumped out in, into the, those patients, and that inflammation continues to cause damage to the vital organs. But if diagnosed and appropriately treated, that inflammation, that damage, actually is reversible. They did a bone marrow biopsy, and they told us that they had figured out what was wrong with Camden. We were so excited. We scheduled a meeting, um, and we sat down, and they told us he had HLH, and that he would not survive the weekend, that he had less than two days to live. I was like, is there any chance that he will survive? And they said the only chance he has is we just started him on a steroid and he has to respond to that steroid immediately. I bursted into tears and cried and cried and they gave me a tissue and I just asked for hope. His doctor called us. She was like, you've gotta come in, you've gotta come see this. She was like, he is responding. And she was ecstatic. So the majority of patients with primary HLH will present um, within the first few years of life. However, we have seen that adolescents, young adults, and even older adults have been diagnosed with primary HLH. So the four classic signs of HLH are a high fever, elevated ferritin, reduced blood counts, and oversized liver and or spleen. These are signs and symptoms that we see in many other disorders. And so when we have a patient who does have an infection and they're not responding to appropriate treatment, that should uh, increase our, our uh, suspicion for primary HLH. There are three ways to diagnose primary HLH. Family history, genetic testing to identify the associated mutations, or meeting five out of the eight HLH 2004 diagnostic criteria. Number one is a fever. 
elevated ferritin, having two of three blood cell lines decrease, enlarged spleen, decrease or absent in case cell function, having an increase in soluble IL-2 or uh, CD25, having low fibrinogen level and or an elevated triglyceride level, seeing hemophagocytosis in a bone marrow specimen or another uh, organ uh, tissue sample. The criteria should raise our suspicion for primary HLH, but confirming and really making the diagnosis. And we have these newer tools, they can actually pick up and confirm a diagnosis of primary HLH much quicker. His HLH was still not in control and he was having hyperinflammation. So they told us that he was going to need a bone marrow transplant. Dr. Rares offered us a clinical trial drug to help condition him and get him ready for transplant. So the ultimate goal in primary HLH is to stabilize the patient and control the massive inflammation. And then, unfortunately, to this day, the only known cure for primary HLH is undergoing what's called a hematopoietic stem cell transplant or a bone marrow transplant, where we're actually using another uh, human's immune system that works properly to replace our patient's broken immune system. What noise does the puppy make? Camden has PVL, which are holes in the white brain matter from being born prematurely. His HLH also attacked his eyes and he is visually impaired. It is recommended that uh, a patient be transferred to one of the few high volume centers uh, around the country who has the knowledge, the expertise and experience in treating and managing these patients. Important though is because we've gotten so much better at diagnosing and treating these children, um, it's also um, one of the most impactful parts of my job, which is being able to provide these, these patients, these um, parents, the hope that we have a high probability of success to get through this journey. Camden is worth everything to us. He is worth the fight every day, and he is worth every tear we shed in the beginning. And he is worth the battle that you go through with HLH and with transplant. What I would say to Camden is that I'm just so proud of him. A lot of people had their hand in saving his life, but he deserves credit too because he's the one who held on and fought and was determined to, to make it through. So. We are just so in awe of him and proud of him every day. For more information on Primary HLH, visit suspectphlh.com. And of course, you can always visit our website, thebouncingact.com. We'll be back right after this.